hey, hey, and welcome to a little video where hopefully I can get everyone up to speed and caught up with some of the recent updates that I have made to Stream Diffusion TD. The operator has changed quite a lot and I've added a bunch of new features. So to bring the operator into your project, you're just going to load it from wherever you have it on disk. There are quite a few more tabs in the parameter pages, but generally you'll notice that most of the default parameters stay the same and most of these new features are disabled by default. But to get it set up for the first time on your computer, you're going to, want to go to the install parameter page. This has a install guide that should pop up and you can resize it by dragging the edges here. What you'll need is Windows 10 or 11 and Nvidia graphics card. I would recommend using Python 3.10.9 though other versions of Python might work, but this one is definitely tested and supported. If you don't have Python 3.9 downloaded, you can copy and paste this download link into your web browser, and then you're gonna to wanna to go down here and hit the Windows Installer 64 bit. Download that and install, and make sure to check Add to Path. You're also gonna want CUDA Toolkit 11.8 to get that. You're gonna to wanna to go to this link and hit Windows X64 10 or 11, depending on what you're at and then you can hit the local or network installation. After you install CUDA, you will need to restart your computer if you don't have it installed. And then also before you restart, if you haven't worked with Git repos before on your computer, you'll want to install Git from this link and you can download from Windows here and hit the 64-bit Git for Windows setup. Again, make sure to click add to path. Once you have all of that installed, you will likely maybe want to restart your computer, especially if you just installed CUDA. Then here you'll see that we have these three install pulses and there's also more information in this install guide. I'm gonna close it and install from scratch. Do note that if you previously had Stream Diffusion working, you can just go set your base folder to the Stream Diffusion folder that you previously had set for the base folder. And it should link up possibly with some of your old model presets, but yeah, so you would just hit this select folder. I'm not gonna do that because once you change your base folder, it changes some of the things internal and I want to show this starting purely from scratch. So you're gonna first hit this download Stream Diffusion button. As long as your base folder parameter is empty, this will open a folder selection menu and you can choose any folder. I'm just going to choose this project folder for now. So you can hit select folder and then you'll see this downloading the repo. Then once you have the repo downloaded, you're gonna to want to hit the second install pulse that will show the version of Python that it is found on your computer and the CUDA version. And you're gonna to wanna to hit install. That's gonna open a command window and it's going to create a virtual environment within this folder. You will see inside the Stream Diffusion folder that we have this virtual environment folder. This is what's containing all of the installation stuff. If anything, goes wrong with the installation or perhaps anything is super messed up, you are able to delete this and hit that install virtual environment and all rec pulse again. And at this point, you're just going to need to wait until this finishes. And I will probably scroll through this with the power of editing. At the end of this second install pulse, which is going to take the longest of anything during the installation, See all the way down at this bottom here, installation finished, press any key to continue. And before we get the stream started, I want to also, since I am on Windows, hit this install tensor RT pulse, which is going to bring a little pop-up and you're gonna hit okay. This is just hopefully giving you more helpful information. And now it's activating the virtual environment and installing the requirements for tensor RT, which will allow the model to run at an even higher FPS given with some of the settings of this operator disabled. Let this download and finish up. The other options on this install parameter page are the set hugging face cache. This allows you to set a custom location. If you turn this off, it'll default to the user cache stored at hugging face slash hub. And you can turn this on, which will then by default store the hugging face cache within the base folder slash models. You can see that path here. You could also set this to another location on disk if you would like. Also disable it if you would like to just use your user cache. 
I would recommend turning this on if you are a fully new user using Stream Diffusion because this is just easier to know where your models are because it will be within this models folder within the Stream Diffusion folder. If you've previously used the operator a bunch and have a bunch of models downloaded, you can keep this off. But do note that if you have models downloaded here and then you turn this on and use the same hugging face ID, it will re-download the model to this location rather than using the model in your user cache. And then this last pulse here is just a button to manually activate the virtual environment. We don't have to worry about that for now because TensorRT installation is finished. Tap any key to continue. And let's get started running the real-time diffusion. So if you go to settings one page and hit start stream, we will get a pop-up and we'll see this matching Triton is not available. That's a normal error. You can ignore that, but you'll also see operating system windows and some other settings about what it's loading. You will likely see that after it says loading SD turbo, it will download a bunch of files. That's normal. Just wait for it to finish downloading, then say streaming active. So once you see that, you know that in Touch Designer, Stream Diffusion is now working. And we have this default fancy banana as the first prompt that I give you. It is set to image to image. By default, you can switch this over to text image mode and maybe change around the seed. You'll also see, and you might have noticed before, that I've got these little icons. These will show you when certain settings are enabled and when they don't show up, they are disabled. It's just a way to take a little glance at the operator and see what's going on without having to dig through the settings. Let's maybe change things up. I'm not going to go into any crazy deep setups on this first tutorial, but to show off the image to image, plug in a noise pattern, and now we get something actually very close to the text to image. But these step sliders are what de determine the denoising. So as you drag the slider value higher, the denoising strength is lower and it is closer to the image. Whereas closer to a value of one, you're gonna be fully denoised and you're gonna get the full diffusion over your input image. Whereas in text to image mode, you're actually just denoising over the input noise that the pipeline generates before the model actually processes anything. Let's drag this step slider back down to one and go to image to image mode, drag a circle off here, and in the output, do over multiply. So now we are constricting the noise to the circle, make the radius a little bit smaller, and maybe soften it slightly. Now let's drag the step slider out and make it a little closer to that shape of the image. Maybe turn monochrome off. So we get colored noise and bring the period down to just get maybe a little bit more detail. And actually it's nice that it's bright against this black background. Um, it's taking the alpha as black. There is no alpha with Stream Diffusion. The output you'll see here with the top output one um, is coming. And it is the same as you see on the op display without the icons. So if we were to create an LFO. Actually, let's make a noise and go time slice, make two channels, X, Y, and drag a null off. I hit Alt N to create that null and A to activate it. Now you can click on the circle and drag these values to the, not the radius, the center. Choose chop reference and chop reference. So now this noise is moving the circle around randomly and we are getting fancier by the minute. And I will cover V2V and control net in future videos, but you can see V2V is going to smooth the output out a lot and give you um, a little bit of cached attention over the frames and control net uh, cannot be enabled because it needs to be enabled when the pipeline loads, but I will show that later. For now, I'm going to take this text comp over and let's make this multi-line word wrapped. I'm not gonna go much crazier with this, but you can see that this is running nice. 
And now something a little prettier than that apple with some V2V attention. And yeah, now that we've gone over the installation and a super basic setup, we are ready to take a closer look at some of the new features and integrating it with other parts of our touch designer projects. If there's anything I've missed in this video, I might include some comments or information in the description, so check that out. Don't hesitate to reach out and make sure to join the Discord for access to community tools and to show off what you're working on and excited about. A huge thanks to all of my Patreon supporters. I can't wait to share more about Stream Diffusion TD as well as other operators that I have coming soon. See ya, and thanks for watching.